This video then is going to be about looking at the depth of field effect in Bryce 7.1 Pro. Uh, I've got my camera set up here facing north and there's an infinite plane. And what I'm going to do is modify the material on this infinite plane just so that uh, it's got something on it that allows us to judge the effect. So I'm just setting up a simple checker pattern on the plane so that so that we can see whether it's in focus or not because depth of field effect is just really essentially about degrading your image to uh, make it simulate the the way lenses work in the real world in rendering you you have this wonderful situation where everything right from the things that are right in front of you into the infinite distance is all in focus well that doesn't happen in the real world with real lenses at least not unless you're using very expensive ones or you're using looking through a pinhole camera so uh, we have the uh, option of having a, an effect that creates this uh, blurred things blurred in front or in the distance depending on where the focus of uh, the lens is so here we've got this checkerboard pattern I find that with depth of field effect it's usually best to have a subject that's quite small and close to the camera as if you start using depth of field effect on giant landscapes it just has the uh, it creates the illusion that they're in fact looking at models and things that are very small because you only really see this effect when it's something that's quite close to you or quite close to the lens in this case so I've set this checkerboard pattern up and I'm going to give our render a subject it's not a very exciting render I know but it'll it'll help us judge the effect and as you can see everything's in perfectly sharp focus at the moment now if we're going to render options we have the render options menu here and we can select premium effects and we have to do that because we want to get this control here depth of field now the lens radius controls how blurred things get the larger this number the more blurred they get and the focal length determines what point is actually in focus I'm going to lower the rays per pixel this will degrade the quality and make the image quite noisy so that you get a fairly gritty level of blurring but for your final render you want the highest setting you can uh, well at least your computer can tolerate because this is quite a processor intensive effect and you'll see that it's uh, it slows things down a bit even on this which is a fairly fast computer so somewhere in here or around about this distance everything's in focus what's beyond is blurred what's close to us is blurred now if we move the sphere towards us bring it a bit close to the camera we can see that it's out of focus we have a handy facility in the render options here that allows us to set this focal length to whatever is selected well the last thing is the selected the sphere so if I set that now it'll set in Bryce units the focal length to that object so now we can have this sphere in focus and likewise I'll select the sphere again and wind it into the distance where things are really out of focus over there now if we go back into render options and select to current selection that will now set that in focus so you can see you have this control that you can set the distance now if you'd set up a complicated scene and you you couldn't get hold specifically of the object that you were trying to set the focus to or the object was too big and you wanted the focus set to the front of the object you could just use this sphere as a target so let's put something in that's big let's put in this cube this is going to be a substitute for something that you might have included in your scene right here's your thing in your scene right let's look at the state of this now this is a big cube and if we set to current selection it will choose the origin of this object I'll show you that now so uh, render options and I also increase the radius so it ex emphasizes the effect of the blurring right so I've set the focal length now and you can see that it's the middle of this elongated cube that's in focus or well, suppose we wanted this corner in focus and we get the sphere and we can move it forward to where the corner of that cube is then we go to render options set to current collect selection and then all we need to do is hide the sphere so we can still keep that in the scene as an object we use for targeting but we don't need to see it in the render so now we've been able to set the focus at the front and likewise if we wanted to set the focus at the back of this object 
just move the sphere back not visible in the render render options set to current selection and then render again so that that allows you to target the effect this effect also works in a parametric render mode which it didn't used to that's a bug that's been fixed for a Bryce 7 um, but uh, not parametric what am I saying I mean um, I'll, I'll just show you panoramic I always get those two muddled up but uh, this is getting onto a rather specialized uh, area and I don't suppose many people were wanting to do a panoramic rem render but I'll, I'll show you that anyway just for the sake of completion it's generally best to set the camera horizontal because otherwise the horizon gets a bit wobbly and uh, as you can see now the the de what the, what is in focus is now a horizontal line or it should be when I've got the effect set we go so there you go there's uh, there it is in uh, a panoramic render and you can still got the option of setting by the same method so you can bring it forward and then render options set to current selection and that will bring you your depth of field forward to that object and so all the things in this line are in focus and all the things in the distance are out of focus so that's your your basic depth of field effect so I suppose the next thing to do is to set up a practical application I can show you how long the render is going to take when uh, when it comes down to doing the final thing so I want to build a quick scene so I'll use some of my own content I can find it here in Bryce tutorials Bryce downloads we'll have uh, let's see what we've got down here I shall use one of these gritty tireable texturable terrains uh, this one in fact so I'm going to use that and uh, what else will I use? I'm going to use uh, Material Showcase 2. I'll get this spidery thing in. So I'll just show you how to load these now. So I'll launch the scene with the terrain in that's going to be the background. And you, the depth of field effect is going to work good with something that's got a lot of detail in it. So this has got uh, quite a bit of detail in to work with. So I'll copy and paste that terrain. If I hold the shift key down, I can I can move it along in discrete steps. Now just select those, control V, control C, control C, control V, copy and paste. So I'm just building up a grid of terrains. So it gradually gets slower and slower as it has to do the copy. You can see the grid pop in when it's finished its copy. Now if I get a hold of all the terrains in one go and go to the attributes. Providing I scale this to 82.08, there's a, a border around each terrain that means they don't quite meet, but if you scale them up slightly, then they all meet exactly. So that'll give me uh, all this, like a sea of stones. So there's my this is a sort of a gravelly effect. Um, and they took, actually took, these are from photographs that I took in the 10 foot down the, uh, the back of the yard. Here, I think the neighbours must think I was potty crawling around in the in the drive, taking photographs of the ground. But uh, this is the result: some stones, and also we want uh, we want this spidery thing. So I'm going to grab that and put it in the in the object library, so I can recall it. So here's the scene, and uh, it's saved on one of these camera dots. So I just have to flick through these dots till I find it. There it is. There, the camera's pointing at it group them all together, go into the create library, try and find one where I've got some space, add it to the library, there you go, there it is in the library, then I can go back to this scene, go to the create library, find the one I've just saved, the object I've saved, and bring it in. It's a little bit big, so I'll scale it down, and then we'll run it out into the scene somewhere, and see if we can figure out how to get it to stand on the ground it looks about right so here's our thing I'm going to move the camera angle down because uh, remember I was saying about depth of field effect wants to work where you've got something fairly close to the camera so I've got this foreground area quite close to the camera I'm just getting my scene set up now the 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 effect is something you want to introduce really at the uh, late, latest stage because of the uh, the impact it's going to have on the render time so I'm just looking at these legs to make sure that they're fitting into the gravel nicely. So there's some gaps in the gravel. 
So I want to stand the, the legs into the gaps, okay? And then I'm going to lower the sun a little bit to create a bit more of a dramatic shadow effect across this. And as the sun gets lower, I'm going to need to apply a little bit more light. So I'll increase the sun by going into the Skylab here, and I'll give it, um, we'll try 140 for the diffuse channel. So that's brightened it up a little bit. Can lower it down a bit further. It's just a matter, you want to lower the sun because it helps the it helps show that all these things are three-dimensional objects and works with the material effects it just makes it a bit more dramatic rather than having flat lighting so at this stage what I want to achieve is these bits out of focus and those bits out of focus and the subject of my image this uh, small mechanical spidery looking thing to be the thing that's in focus so that's the thing that's selected so we can go render options premium effects. I'm going to set the rays per pixel, pixel down at this point. Depth of field set to current selection and then we'll see what, what the level of um, depth of field is going to help us here. So this this bit, if I can get hold of it, is slightly out of focus so that might work in our favour. So it tells you, you, you know, that you're looking at something very small because these things are very blurred. Say if you want to have a, a lower level of blurring you just reduce this value here so you could set it down and then uh, so that Camtasia Studio tends to interfere with the menus the effect is more subtle and and for a higher level you can just make the figure much larger and then you, uh, you get extreme blurring on these things which might be a bit too strong there because it becomes very fuzzy and you you can't really see what you're looking at so I'll set it back to its default value and then we'll set the render options to their highest value and see how long that's going to take to render so already you can see it's slowed down considerably because it's not even reached the bottom yet and uh, it says the render time's 37 minutes I suppose what I could do is reduce the document size that'll improve the render time so I'll just let that render out and you can see what the finished result was right it's still rendering but I'm just looking at this now and I can see here I've got a little bit of a leg poking behind here that uh, is showing through and it's rather spoiling the effect because you can't see what it belongs to so what I'm going to do is move this across this is why really you need to preview it in a in, in much lower rays per pixel and pick your faults out. I think I'm going to include another one of these because I can just copy and paste it so it's not going to make any more difference really and if I want to make it look a bit different from the others I can I can flip if I find the right control I can flip the X value so it becomes a mirror image of the other one so it doesn't have to look identical and I can make a third one in the background and this will just sort of add a add a sense of depth you know because there's little, there's more going on in the scene and it's it's all about depth depth of field really the clues in the name I suppose so I'll just uh, add a few companions for this and it'll just make the scene a bit more interesting because I've still got a bit of time to play with these videos um, you're allowed to upload about 15 minutes really uh, before uh, reaches the limitation so let's have a look at that so we've, we've now got several of them in the scene doing things I'm just going to rotate this one Oops, uh, oh a bit more because it's, it's echoing the the one next to it probably a bit much I'll try and flip it around and see how that looks something's going off here right oh, it's got two legs raised there so um, that will give that a whirl then and see how that looks so render options and this time really we'll let it finish I'll pause the video here then is the final rendered image it took about 20 to 25 uh, minutes on my computer uh, which uses an i7 uh, processor, a 920, so it's not a slow machine. And I also use priority and set it at high because I wasn't doing anything else on the computer. Uh, that allows it to take full advantage of all the the cores in the processor and the virtual cores, of which there are, I think they all all adds up to about eight cores, which is the most Bryce can use. So if you have if you're lucky enough to have a Xenon machine with 12 cores, it'll still only use the eight cores. Um, there you go, then that's the, uh, the, the, the conclusion to the video. Uh, I hope you find it useful.